Welcome to a very educational episode of the Maritime Health and Performance Chat. Today we have an undergrad schoolmate of mine, Paige Lewis. She's currently teaching, but well be it for me to explain what she's doing because I bet you she can do a lot better job. So Paige, the floor is yours. Thanks, Matt. Yes, as he mentioned, um, we went to our undergrad together. We took kinesiology at UMB. I then proceeded to go to Crandall University after I graduated with Bachelor of Science in Kin. I then took education at Crandall. It only took me a year and a half. I did like a fast track kind of program with it. While I was at UNB, I actually um, ran track and field for about two years while I was there. Um, I did, I kind of specialized more in hurdling, sprinting, and the relays, which was a lot of fun. And then I kind of missed it the last two years. I was trying to be a little bit more academically focused my last two years at UMB. So then at Crandall, since I missed the athletic scene a little bit, I decided to try out for the soccer team. And I played for the year and a half that I was there. So I played soccer there, which was a lot of fun. I actually ended up getting MVP for the year for the team, which was super nice. I'm now located in Toronto, Ontario, which I never <laughs> thought I would be moving up here. I'm terrible. Yes, yeah. <laughs> especially with these times. It's been oh my goodness. Um so yeah, I'm just teaching up here. I've actually had I kind of luck of the draw I ended up just kind of applying for one of the first jobs that I saw up here being a teacher I didn't have my hopes too high um, so I ended up right now I'm currently teaching sciences like I'm teaching kinesiology at the grade 12 level which is amazing I'm also teaching some phys ed courses and then a lot of biology courses as well so it's been a lot of fun getting to uh, getting to know the students in my class sizes right now the most students that are in my class I have is 11 and the least amount of students that I've had since I started here was only about two. <laughs> so it's been fantastic getting to see my students on a, like a really individual level and getting to build those relationships with such small class sizes, which is super nice. Yeah, I bet you it's just a, a total different experience. I know uh, not the same thing, especially where you're, where you're teaching younger kids, but I've been teeing a couple courses and, and getting to witness uh, kind of some of the instructors running the courses online and how, how TAs, you know, can run in the courses and the labs and whatnot. It's really different. There's quite a learning curve. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I love how you downplay the fact that it only took you a year and a half to get your education degree and, you know, and, and, and you, you know, oh, you just happened to get that first job. I mean, I mean, you know, you, you obviously, you work for it. I mean, I mean, um, you know, a lot of jobs are always looking for well-rounded individuals, you know, uh, knowing you from school you always you know worked hard and had, had the marks and then on top of that you know you had those time management skills um to, to play multiple sports to leave and go back to sports so i mean definitely shouldn't be downplayed and can definitely be kind of a, a a lesson for anyone listening about you know time management you know sometimes there's not enough hours in the day but you can really maximize that if you kind of organize it and, and, and if you really want to do something yeah absolutely that's actually something my boss kind of harps on a lot for me she says that i have an extremely healthy work-life balance because i value you know mental and physical health so much and i really i kind of throw that at my students a lot too how important physical activity and getting mindfulness in and and all these healthy habits and especially in the time we're in right now it's really important to kind of prioritize yourself before like schoolwork and things like that too so it's kind of a full circle i would love if you don't mind to kind of uh if, if you would kind of capitalize on that mindfulness thing i went through a little bit of a spell of mental health and i saw some doctors and whatnot that was one of the first recommendations they made for me to uh, just do some mindfulness exercises and um you know just being cognizant of kind of what's going on being aware of kind of any anxiety and as, far as from the physical health side if you're mindful you be mindful in, in in movements you perform be mindful in Am I sore? What's hurt? What's tight? What's feeling good, right? So, so I'd love, if, if you don't mind, to elaborate a little bit on that and how you kind of apply that for your students. Yeah, mindfulness is huge. It's all about taking that aspect and just not trying to take away the negative thoughts that you're portraying, but just paying attention to them and trying to figure out why you're having them and then how you can cope with them to kind of make your best self. So I do that with my students. I'll do like mindful minutes every if they're in class and I feel like they're kind of just like, I don't know, lethargic or just feeling a little bit overwhelmed, I'll take that time and I'll just kind of put them through a little bit of a sequence because I'm also a certified yoga teacher. I actually just got certified this past summer. So it's fantastic. I learned I learned a lot about, about myself and about, you know, how important your mental state is with your physical health as well. So I'll just kind of put the students through a little bit of a more so me talking. It's kind of teacher led. 
to an aspect where I'll just kind of tell them it's different activities every time. I'll just kind of say, you know, put your thoughts that you have, you know, put them on this leaf, let it flow down the river. Every time another one of these kind of thoughts pop up, just keep placing them on a leaf. Don't ignore them. Pay attention to those thoughts and feelings that you're having, but then just kind of let them slide away right? Let them pop up, acknowledge them, see that they're there. And then they even find they're like, wow, I didn't realize how much I had going on. And that just really kind of settles them down. Yeah, it's amazing kind of, uh, you know, how, how our thought process uh, is, isn't always introspective, right? Like, it's so easy to kind of get swept up in, in the, the day to day that you really don't realize how much maybe stress you're holding on to or how much you know maybe something negative that happened months year even years ago that you're still holding on to right and I mean if you if you can kind of just perform these you know kind of mindfulness tasks it, it's a really great way to sort of look inward kind of get an idea of what's going on yeah exactly I did another good activity with them too this one I did with my grade nine phys ed students it was something I, I incorporated when COVID kind of first started last year around March well, I got them to just go on a mindful walk, no technology, no friends, no talking, nothing. They just had to use their senses around them to kind of appreciate and acknowledge just what the outdoors had to bring to them. And then I even had some feedback from some of the students. They came back and they were just like, I just sat on a park bench. They were only supposed to be outside for about 20 minutes. One of the students said, I just sat out there for an hour and I just contemplated and thought so much. And he said he just needed it just to put the technology away and just sit and look and listen and feel. It really makes a big difference. That, that's that's a really good point about the, the technology. Um, you know, there's so much literature out there that shows, especially with, with, with young people, that um, technology and, and the presence of cell phones and everything and social media is really driving anxiety levels in teenagers, especially with, you know, the ones who are really looking at it. And I mean, I shouldn't count out adults as well, because I know it also, it doesn't stop after after teenage after the teenage years, right? Like there's still people who get affected by that through social media. You always have your phone on you. So, you know, the phone could ring at any second for work or anything like that and I guess that kind of alludes a bit to that work-life balance you talked about but pretty awesome that you know it's probably pretty tough to get a, a group of grade nines to put down their phone and just go for a walk yeah I was definitely surprised that they were so dedicated enough to actually go out and do it I was I didn't have high hopes but they always exceed my expectations they're a really great bunch Another kind of interesting thing too is, is the application of the, the nature walk, right? We just go out and, and enjoy nature. Uh, one of my old roommates at UMB, he was doing his master's in psychology for David Scott and he would walk everywhere. And I mean, Fredericton's a pretty great city for that. If you're down from uh, Beaverbrook upwards, not so much, but uh, he would walk everywhere and he would make a point to, you know, go for nature walks, just places in Fredericton, you know, having all the, the walking paths. What a great place for it. But, you know, no music, no phone, no nothing, just listening to the sounds. And, and there's actually literature out there to demonstrate the positive effects that can have on our mood state. Mm -hmm. Something interesting you mentioned was you're teaching a grade nine phys ed class. How does that go? from you know, kind of satellite teaching? Well, at the moment, I'm actually teaching a recreational leadership class for grade 12s and grade 11 biology, but before, so they have their four terms. Yep. They have their quads. So when this first started, yeah, I was teaching grade nine phys ed and it started virtually and ended virtually because it's just a 10 week course, right? It's intensive. It's every day for two hours a day. So I found since it was small, I was able to kind of, I did a lot of things myself so i would kind of put the video on me and you know one day i would put them through a yoga class and we would do a yoga class and it would just kind of be like almost like them watching me through the screen but they didn't even have to turn their cameras on but at the end we would kind of come and sit and then they would give me feedback on how they felt about it and i would give them feedback on how they can do this on their own and then we would kind of continue like that so every couple of days i would kind of teach them information about what wellness looks like um, the wheel of wellness how it's not just fitness and eating and nutrition and things like that but how it's you know spiritually emotionally the whole being a well-rounded in your wellness and yeah i don't know it just kind of it was definitely very challenging but some days we would have to sit in the class and other days i would try to get them active myself by demonstrating it to them to show that it is possible just to do in your own home i was gonna say it's it's best to lead from the front yeah <laughs> It's, uh, it, it's pretty amazing uh, that you have that, that yoga certification because, I mean, that's such a nice tool to have in your tool belt. Myself and a couple of old teammates and friends of mine, we run a yearly wrestling camp over the summer. I might as well do a cheap plug now called the Atlantic Regional Wrestling Camp. And like a lot of things, we had to run it online this year. So, you know, things like I would be running workout sessions online. And I mean, that's kind of an interesting one because in itself, just because, you know, 
you're you're so like conscientious of like you know are you breathing heavy Do, are you doing something funny making weird faces it's kind of a again like a learning curve and eventually you kind of just gotta say ah screw it like it's it's going to be what it's going to be. And Jordan Smith, of uh, another yoga instructor based out of probably not too far from you, kind of the, the Moncton region, she used to wrestle as well. And, and she would run yoga sessions and just, it's such a useful tool and such a practical thing to be taught over, you know, like a Zoom or something like that. Because you, know, you can kind of slow it down, explain everything. And, and you know, people just blow up your screen and watch you go through poses and, and you can check on people and instruct them and whatnot. But yeah, it's such a useful tool. That's kudos to you for going to get that. Yeah, definitely. I definitely feel that it's come in handy more than once. COVID has definitely made things super weird. And I've noticed you were talking about being self-conscious and stuff like that. But I always tell my students, a lot of the time it is mandatory for them to have their camera on. But I tell them that 80% of the students will be looking at me. And if they're not looking at me, they're looking at themselves. So don't ever worry about people looking at you through the Zoom because chances are that's not actually happening. That's, that's an awesome, awesome point to make. I mean, one of my favorite kind of quotes I always think about from that, just, I can't even remember who it was, but it was just watching those after school Just for Laugh comedy specials. And one of the stand up guys comes up and says, you know who cares about your problems less than you do? Everybody. <laughs> that's exactly, you know who cares about those funny faces you're making when you're doing a squat less than you do? everyone no one cares about that i mean it, it's a really hard thing to kind of get through your head because you know you always ha kind of have that feels like someone's watching you especially maybe less so on the zoom but like uh when you go to a gym or, or something right or if you go for a run in public or you're doing a workout in a park or something like that sometimes you do kind of feel that self-consciousness maybe use some some mindfulness practices and just be introspective and say i'm doing this for me my health my fitness whatever everyone else thinks uh, who cares yeah exactly so i guess while we're on the topic of things you've had to kind of modify and, and whatnot. So what's kind of one of the most things that stuck out of how COVID has affected your work and sort of considerations and modifications you have had to make to continue providing that service to your students? Yeah, there's kind of two ways that I can think of right off the bat. So because I was teaching biology for sciences as well as phys ed, biology's really taken a toll because the one thing I love about Toronto is it has resources everywhere you look. So I used to take the kids to the science center to Ripley's Aquarium. We would go on all these amazing field trips and now they can't even do so much so as go into a lab and look into a microscope. It's hard to get that hands-on learning that we want. Oh, for sure. So I found that I've had to go for with a lot of like virtual labs, which they serve their purpose, but it's certainly not how I would have wanted to learn grade 11, grade 12 biology. So I kind of feel for them in that aspect. The other one, because I'm teaching phys ed courses, obviously every couple of days we would go outside. We would just go play soccer, play basketball, softball, whatever. We would just get out, run around, get some fresh air. And now I can, it's just hard for me to just see the kids kind of roll out of bed and try to get the motivation to actually want to go outside. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of hard to see just them go from being so happy to playing with their friends and hanging outside to just waking up and being super quiet. And it's hard to get that enthusiasm and that motivation in them. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, and you see that for, for especially kids as far as, you know, school, sports, everything like that, right? They're, you think back to the experiences we would have had when we were their age, and it's just, it's kind of sad to see they're missing out. And it's amazing that, you know, there's people that are like you out there that are trying to make these adaptations and modifications and make the best out of a shitty situation. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, before we wrap up here, my final big question for you, and not that I don't think what you've said already kind of would fit this, but if there's one thing you could pick that you're doing right now to stand out and get ahead in your field, what do you think that is? Oh, I'm always looking to get additional qualifications like the yoga courses, etc. So this September, I applied to do my master's through U of Ottawa for master's in healthy recreational living. It's like an education strand of it. So I'm really hoping that that kind of opens some more opportunities for me moving forward as well. I'm so happy you said that because I think one of the biggest travesties is when you see people start to kind of get some success and notoriety, start climbing in their field. And then they become complacent because people, you know, they get those pats on the back, they get some success. And, you know, it's really easy to say what I'm doing works. And, you know, five years later, 10 years later, 20 years later, maybe you don't see it till then, but because you lagged and you didn't, you know, have that constant pursuit of, of knowledge and furthering your education and bettering yourself, you got to sharpen your sword, right? You know, you see kind of a legacy of could have been a lot better than they were if they just would have kept progressing. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm a teacher, but I'm a strong believer in always being like a lifelong learner, right? So always try to better yourself, never be stagnant. I love that sentiment. I guess before we finish up here, is there anything you want to highlight? Any projects, programs, anything you're, you're up to? Any social media? No, no, not that I can think of. <laughs> All right then, Paige. Well, folks, if, uh, if you have kids and you live in the Toronto area and you're lucky enough to get in one of Mrs. Lewis classes, then good on you. Paige, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, that's all for this week. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Appreciate it.